Hello, and welcome to another installment of Dr. Darnese's religion class. Thanks for stopping by again. Well, here it is, end of October, and once again, we're at the Halloween season. And, um, you know, some people get so freaked out about Halloween. Usually the people who are more religiously conservative get kind of freaked out or like, you know, they don't want anything to do with Halloween. They think that it's all demonic. You know, that seems to be the default for people who are, you know, conservative or orthodox religion. Um, and like I said in my other videos, you know, if you don't know about something, you don't have to just relegate it to being demonic or evil. Um, because it's just something you don't understand at this point. So I want to come on and do a little bit um, of a lesson about what Halloween is. What is Halloween? Um, so it, you know, I've been talking to you a lot about folk religions, folk practices. And primarily I've been talking about African traditional religions, African traditional practices, how African Americans translated those African traditions in the New World, in the United States, how we ended up with our folk practices, which we call conjure and hoodoo. Um, but keep in mind that folk religion, folk practices are things, uh, practices, beliefs, rituals that people all over the world have, right? So just as much as we want to reclaim for ourselves as African descent people that we had our folk and our traditional practices throughout the continent of Africa. Likewise, people in other parts of the world, Europe, Asia, you know, where just wherever, wherever there are people, there are going to be belief systems and rituals and traditions about, you know, the big questions in life about God. Is there a God? How did I get here? What happens to me when I die? So when we look at Halloween, what we're really seeing are the remnants of European pagan, if we will, or pre-Christian religious practices. Now, what happens with religion and the way people practice them is that, you know, there's an ideal called religion and then there's the way that people actually practice them, right? And so people mix things together. Well, one of the traditions of the pagan European cultures, and I'm using that term really broadly because there's all kind of different Europeans and all kind of different practices, right? But for the most part with Halloween, I'm talking about, you know, the Celtic, um, the Anglo-Saxon kind of people and the way they were living out their traditions before the Christian religion basically conquered them and said, as usual, stop doing that and be a good Christian and do this. And as I always say, there is no way to stop people from doing what grandma used to do and what great grandma used to do. There's no way to stop that, right? You just mix it together and before, over the generations, before you know it, people have forgotten why they do the thing, but it's still present in the religions. Even a religion like Christianity, the way things like Christmas and, and Easter are celebrated contain all of these folk um, leftovers. So when we look at Halloween, we're looking at a tradition that's actually called Sawain, um, Samhain. I know it looks like it says Samhain in English, but you know, it's a, it's a Celtic kind of a word. And so it doesn't look the way it, it's spelled in English anyway. So it's a tradition that really comes from um, acknowledging that there are non-physical entities, right? Like, like we, as we exist as human beings in physical form, we are not all that exists, right? There is a realm of the unseen. There are spirits, angels, however you might, whatever language you might use to try to describe them. There are non-physical realities, right? And so the idea is that on Halloween, um, All Hallows' Eve, that there is a thinning of the veil between the people who are alive in the flesh and those who are disembodied, non-physical. This is always going on around us all the time, right? That's why we hear sometimes people say, oh, I saw a ghost or this house is haunted. Or, you know, if you have pets, um, especially cats, you know, they're always staring off in the corner or something. You don't see anything and they're staring off at something that they see. 
And so at this point, I just say, well, I hope it's my ancestors who are here to help me because she's staring at something and talking to it. So <laughs> I, I hope that it's, you know, an ancestor. But anyway, uh, Halloween then is about the practice of acknowledging that there is a spiritual component to our physical life. And there's a point at which the veil or the separation between our worlds is very thin. And so you will have more interaction and more likely to have interaction between the two. Okay, so you said, what does this have to do with jack-o'-lanterns and, and costumes and pumpkins? Well, you know, think about in antiquity, in the ancient world, how were people going to understand what they were encountering? If they, um, you know, understood that, okay, I think, I think I saw something or, you know, they, they just, they, they were encountering somehow this, this, this non-physical world. And basically the way they encountered that was fear. They were afraid. So a practice that they would do, at least some of these European practices, what they would do is decorate themselves decorate things around them in nature in a scary way to kind of scare off or scare back the uh, um, spirits. So so if I'm scared, I want to scare you back and maybe prevent you from, you know, getting too close to me. So if I dress up in a scary way, if I paint my face in a scary way, then I have maybe some recourse in scaring them away. Um, so it can be understood as self-protective, really. And, you know, I'm really making a general statement here just for the sake of this video and helping people get some understanding. But, you know, really what you want to do is do your own research. It's very easy to do on, on the Internet now. You can just look up what is the meaning of Halloween. And the reason I'm saying this is because there are so many individual European practices and there's so many things that people add in or, you know, that we don't do it this way, we didn't do it that way, that... I'm just letting you know it's such, a, it's such a spectrum because we're talking about, you know, millions of people and over a, an enormous span of time. So if I say, you know, this is the way these people understood what they were doing and they dressed up to, for this purpose, then somebody else is going to say, well, we did it for this reason. And so I'm, I'm just acknowledging that, that, yeah, you have different people in different parts of the world, different aspects of the culture who mix it together a little bit differently. Everybody has their own um, mythology, their own narrative that goes along with their particular uh, tradition, their particular thing that they do. But what I just want to convey to you is that when we see Halloween and these practices, what we're looking at are aspects of pagan religion, an understanding of the world in a pre-Christian um, uh, framework, and then a response from those people to back to the spiritual world because human beings have always had this knowledge or belief that there is the spiritual world and that we're in constant interaction with it even if we can't quite put our hands on it, we can't quite define it we have our beliefs about it and when we have our beliefs we create traditions we create rituals so what we see now in halloween is obviously a very commercialized um, evolution of this sort of pagan kind of uh, traditions. So, you know, we've got, you know, I don't know, when does Halloween start in the stores now? I don't know, September, August, maybe, because, you know, then it's on. It's just like back to school season and then it's Halloween already. Next to the Halloween stuff, now already, here it is late October, already the Christmas stuff is next to the Halloween stuff. As the Halloween stuff gets marked down on clearance and moved out of the way, then you have Christmas stuff right there immediately. So we know in our culture, um, holidays have become very commercial. And so it's about, it's presented to us as a party. You know, everybody's got to get a costume, buy a costume, go have your face painted, you know, hire a makeup artist and do this, have a party and you got to have all the decorations, which means you got to go to the store and buy all of these things. You know, you say, oh, I want my kids to have a good um, party or experience, buy costumes for them, buy a bunch of candy. And so, yeah, these things have definitely become um, uh, commercial in our culture, but Again, I like to educate, right? It's what I do. I'm a religion professor. And so what I like to convey is what are we looking at? 
it's not something to just automatically be afraid of or say, um, you know, I don't want to get involved in that devil foolishness and that devil worship. It's not devil worship. You know, please, if I can just convey a little bit of teaching to people about these traditional uh, practices, folk practices, traditional folk religions from all around the world. If I could just convey, you know, please don't just relegate everything to being devil worship. It's something that maybe you don't understand, maybe you never heard of before, but say, hmm, I wonder what that is. I wonder what that's about. And because we have the internet, everything's easy to just say, wonder what this is, what is this? And you'll find Wikipedia, you'll find YouTube videos, you'll find all kinds of things to tell you what it's about. So, you know, if you just decide, well, I don't, I'm not a person who does Halloween because I don't fall into all that commercialism. Okay, fine. Or it seems to be against my religion. Okay, fine. But then know what it is. Oh, this is the remnants. This is the leftovers from some pre-Christian religions. And that's kind of how you, all you would really need to know if you're a lay person, right? You're not interested in, in necessarily knowing all the details. Just watch a video like mine and I give you what I can, uh, what I can share with you. So anyway, I'm going to just leave it at that. If you have any additional questions, comments, please leave them in the section below. Um, and then I will be right back with another uh, episode of Dr. Chinese Religion Class.